I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Jack Bateson. Jack, before we start this interview and talk about last week, is that a Christmas treat to your left? It must be, mate. I've managed to get sat in a coffee shop because my battery was running low. So, yeah, everything's Christmas at the minute. Good, that's it. Well, it's too early for me, I think. I think Christmas should be the first of December. <laughs> you can argue with me. Never too early. That Never one. too early. Yeah, well, obviously, it's been a, a, a week since your fight with uh, Shabazz Masood, and I just want to know, have you watched the fight back and your reflections on it? Um, I've managed to watch a little bit of it back. Um, I struggled, though, because the commentary um, the commentary was just slating me from, from the get-go. Uh, so I had, to, I had to mute it from around, around round three onwards. Um, and you know what? It was a good fight. It was a good competitive fight. Um, I'd love to do it again one day, but listen, the better I'm one on the night. And um, yeah, it is what it is. You, you, especially the first two rounds, you seem to have been, you found your groove quite, quite quick. You seem to be in and out quite sharp. Um, so what was the tactics going in? Was it to get in and get out? Um, I think the plan was just to, you know, set a high pace. Um, a lot of people felt like can't live with my work rate, you know, I found a lot inspiring. Um, I can set a good pace from the first round and keep it for the good 12 rounds. Um, Shabazz, he had a good game plan, you know, he, he caught a lot on the guard. Um, he, he tried to slow the pace down, but, you know, my, my plan was to sort of disrupt that pace and and um, work at my level. Um, looking back, if I'd, have, if I'd have had a bit of a different game plan, uh, I think the fight was winnable. I think I think a lot of the a lot of the rounds were competitive, um, even though the commentary was was quite was quite against me, um, in my opinion. But you know, I, I look back and a lot of the rounds were competitive when I when I watched it on mute. And um, yeah, the better I'm one on the day. There's there's no excuses from me. Uh, I think if I get it right on the night, it's a fight that I can win. Um, but yeah, congrats to Shabazz. I think it was a great performance. Um, it's a shame I didn't get get to see the final bell because uh, I felt like I deserved to um, with, with just a minute to go. Um, I got caught with a shot, you know, hit me sort of like on the on the side back of the head and it just scrambled my senses. And uh, I think I was hit with better shots throughout the fight on the on the front of my face. So it's uh, it, it was a tough one to take and it's still tough now. But um, I'll come back. I'll come back. So I was just going to say, talking about that 12th round, I was going to ask how badly hurt were you going into that 12th round? Because like you said, you probably deserved, both men deserved to see the 12th end of that fight because it was, a, it was a chess match throughout and it was like a battle of the game plans, who had the yeah. best game plan going into that fight? Because like I said, your skill set are very, very similar. You're both highly skilled fighters. But yeah, that 12th round, that that shot landed, how badly hurt were you? Um, I just remember finding myself on the floor and I remember feeling the shot on the back of my head. Um, it was a hook. He didn't mean to always hit me on the back of the head. He, if, if it were left, right, or a right, left, uh, as a southpaw, and the hook caught me just on the side of the back of the head, um, scrambled my senses. I remember being on the floor and thinking, right, take a knee now, you know, because it, it, did, it did scramble me. Um, I got up and I was all, but my balance was all over. Um, and like I say, it would have been nice to see the final bell, but, um, yeah, I was, just, I was just scrambled and he managed to get the finish. Going into that 12th round, okay, you had fought 11 rounds. When you're going back to your corner with your dad and your team, were you confident you were winning the fight or were you, how were you feeling going back to the corner each round? I knew it was close. Uh, I knew it was very close. I think it was just sort of what, what you liked. I think uh, from hearing back from the promoters, you know, one of the judges had me winning by two rounds uh, and two judges had him winning, uh, I think, by a couple of rounds also. Uh, 
So I think either way, I needed the knockout. In my opinion, um, we were saying, listen, you need a good a good round now. Uh, and I went out there sort of hell for leather. Um, but yeah, it, listen, it, it was close. I think the commentary, if you were listening to the commentary, you'd think I'd, I'd lost every round because it sounded like nothing was given to me at all. But um, but like I said, listen, the better man won on the night. I think Shabazz had the perfect, perfect game plan. Um, and yeah, I, I think I think I think the right man won. It would have been nice to see the final belt, uh, and it could be a split decision win uh, for him. But you know, I'll come again, and mm-hmm. you know, I hope we can do it again one day, and I can uh, I can turn the table on it. Well, I said to you, both of you before the fight in, in fight week. I said that this fight is worth more than a final eliminator. Yeah, yeah, for that British title. But that being said, the fact that two young men and you and Shabazz. <laughs> Undefeated fighters put that on the line for this final eliminator speaks volumes to you both of you and your characters. I think a lot of fighters should be doing that. I don't think a lot of fighters should be caring much about their zero. If you look back to the eighties with the four kings, Leonard Hahn, Nagler, and Duran, they didn't care. You know what I mean? I think a lot of emphasis is played on that zero and being yeah. undefeated like Boy Mayweather. But if a lot of fighters thought were going like thought like that, we'd never ever see these big fights, and we're not seeing these big fights. So, yeah. but you used to put that on the line. I've got a lot more. I've got a lot, lot more. I've got a lot of respect for the pair of you, and uh, it, it's testament to your character, Nick. To be honest, that you you took that so early on. I appreciate that, Andrew. And honestly, like you say, I think um, I think more fighters needed to be doing that these days. Um, we're both both had quite a lot to lose, you know, going into this. One of us was one of us was going to lose lose our role, like you said. Um, but we can rebuild. Like I can rebuild. You know, I've had a lot of. A lot of people message me and say, you know, they're proud of me and and this and that. But I thought when I had my first loss as a pro, I felt like I thought that'd be it. My support base would go. But you know, it just shows how lucky and blessed I am to have a great team of people around me and supporters. Uh, so I'm going to be back, like you say, in the new year. I'll be back, uh, rebuild, I need to get myself into the position where I can sort of challenge, challenging them sort of fights again. And you know, um, I want to be a cha- I want to be a champion again, and I know that I, I will be. Jack, you turned pro the tail end of 2017. So you've been pro five years. With a global pandemic in between that, uh, you've had 18 fights, which if you take away a year because of the pandemic or a year and a half because of that pandemic, you fought on average just over maybe between four four and five fights a year since you've turned pro, um, which is quite a lot um, yeah. for a fighter. Um, you haven't took a lot of punishment because I've been to a few of your fights. You don't take a lot of hits to the face. But is there a case of a... Ugh, it's time for a little rest now. Maybe come back, get a good rest under your belt and come back maybe the, the second, third of 2023 or are you itching just get back in there? Um, to be honest, I think I think I will rest. I will rest, especially now I've got my little one. It was her birthday the other day, which is mm-hmm. nice to be able to celebrate and enjoy a bit of food, a bit of normal life. So I'm going to I'm gonna chill out a little bit towards the end of this year. But... Um, I'm a fighter. I've always been a fighter, and I want to. I want to get back in the gym, and I. I want to prove, prove to myself, and prove to everyone else. You know how how good I am, and um, my time will come. I feel like I've spent too long in the game for it not to come, and I, I just need to keep grafting. And one day I'll be a. Uh, I'll be champion. Um, yeah, just a blip in the road, hopefully. Well, that's what I said. I spoke to you and Shabazz, and I spoke about that division, not world level, domestically, when you've got Liam Davis who's fighting this weekend, you've got uh, Shabazz, you, um, Gamal Yafai, who's there as yep. well. He's, he's still kicking about. Peter McGrail, I believe, is there. Joe McGrail is there. Mark Leach, um, gosh, is there. domestically, it's a it's a fire division. It's on fire, and it's a great division to be in. So, looking at, looking at that division and... The, 2023, what are the hopes? Are you just wanting to get back into the big fights, win, lose, or draw? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I'm sure I'll have to have a maybe a fight to rebuild or whatever. But mm. whatever my promotional team have got plans for me, but I want to be in the big fights. That that fight with Shabazz, I was able to get motivated for it. You know, even though I'd had a few big fights before that, I was really able to get motivated for it. And um, I um I want to be in them fights. Even that fight, yeah. Even though I lost. Everyone was talking about it, uh, even though it wasn't the main event. It felt like it was the main event, and everyone was talking about it. And I, I want to be in, in them nights and uh, feel on another day, if I'd have got the plan right, maybe I'd have come out on top. But um, I didn't. I've took the L. 
Um, I just need to make sure now that I, I never take I never take one again. I, I've got to mention Dennis McCann's in that division as well. How can I forget Dennis McCann? He's a, he's a good little fighter. Yeah, but a lot of good fights. I think that's what I mean. It's, it's, and you're all young as well, so you could have rematches, trilogy fights amongst yourself. And I, personally, I would like to see that. I think a lot of young fighters we should see. He's all going at it, fighting each other over and over again. Um, but that's never here, no there. Yeah. Um, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people, I, I say, for me, this YouTube boxing world that we're in now, all these fighters, influencers fighting each other, I think boxing has created that because the fights aren't getting made that we want to see. We're not seeing Terence Crawford and Spence. We're not seeing Joshua Tyson Fury. So hopefully that you and Shabazz have maybe set a little precedent to just go in there, have a yeah. fight, lose, you lose, you win, you win, dust yourself off and go again. I agree, mate. I, I hope that's what's going to happen. And like you say, me and Shabazz are in that fight. You know, it, hopefully it'll set a precedent where other fighters will do the same now. And, and mm. but, you know, it's not the end of the world if you go into one of these 50 fights and get beat because it's definitely not the end of the world for me. And I'll, I'll be back I'll be back very soon. Yeah, listen, well said, Jack. Listen, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me and IFL TV. Your, your coffee's probably getting cold or your toastie's getting cold, so I'll let you get back to it, <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Honestly, I appreciate obviously uh, the support and that. So yeah, I'll be back. Good man. Cheers, Jack. We'll speak to you soon, brother. Top man. Thanks, Bye -bye, Andrew. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.